Hey, what's up everybody? This is Caroline. Welcome back to part nine of Beginning Metal. In 2015, Apple introduced the Model I.O. framework. Using this framework, we can import 3D assets of various types and describe how they should be rendered. You can even describe physically realistic lighting and materials. We'll use Model.io in this video to process imported OBJ model files. At the end of this video, your app will look like this. We'll import a file that was created in Blender. This mushroom is a very simple file, but you can also import much more complex ones too. The OBJ format was developed many years ago by Wavefront Technologies. It's a format that describes geometry in 3D. There are a multitude of 3D modeling apps out there, and they will all export to the OBJ format. Blender is very popular because it's free, and you can do just about anything in Blender. You can even script games. This is a very simple OBJ file exported from a modeling app called Cheetah 3D. If you look carefully, you should be able to recognize pieces of this file. It's a plane, so it has four vertices, prefixed with the letter V. The next section is texture coordinates, prefixed with VT. The prefix VN describes normals. We haven't covered normals yet, but briefly, it's a vector that's perpendicular to the face of the triangle. It's useful for lighting and working out how light will bounce off a surface. The bottom line prefixed with F are the indices for the triangle. Obviously, the plane is about as simple as you can get, but even model files with millions of triangles follow the same rules as this. In the resources folder for this video, I've included three models for you to experiment with. A human figure from a great 3D program called Make Human. There's a mushroom made by Vicky Wendelik and a textured cube exported from Blender. We're going to be using Model.io as an easy way of importing OBJ files. But that's just a fraction of what Model.io can do for you. The WWDC 2015 video on Model.io is a recommended watch to see the possibilities of realistic rendering. To import a model, you use the model's URL and a vertex descriptor to define what attributes you need to create an MDL asset. This MDL asset is a container for objects. The objects could be lights or cameras, or even the matrix transform hierarchies. We're currently interested in creating vertex buffers, just like our primitive cube and plane. And the MDL asset contains MDL mesh objects, which have vertex buffers. Using these MDL objects, you can do interesting things like generating normals or lighting information we're going to create metal kit meshes from these model IO mesh objects. And we're going to be able to send the metal kit vertex buffers to the GPU. Each metal kit mesh will have one or more sub meshes with the index information. To render the object, we loop through the metal kit meshes. We get the vertex buffer from the mesh and set that as the GPU's vertex buffer. Then we loop through the meshes submeshes and draw the group using the submesh indices. You can see that it's very similar to what we did setting up vertices and indices for our primitives, but Model.io does all the heavy lifting of creating the vertex and index array information. In the demo, we'll load up this mushroom using methods from Model.io and then texture it and add it to our scene. This is where we left off after the challenge from the previous video. We have a cube and a plane being rendered in 3D with depth. These aren't very exciting models, so we'll move on to importing OBJ files with Model.io. And I have a mushroom model created in Blender that we can import. There are a number of things that we have to do. We have to create a new model class. We'll need a method for loading the OBJ file using Model.io. We'll have to override the do render method in the new model class. And we'll add the mushroom OBJ model to our project and to the game scene. And finally, we'll texture the model. 
So first I'll clear the game scene and reset the camera position. Now I'll create a new Swift file called Model and I'll import the Metal Kit framework and make the class a subclass of Node. As we saw previously, OBJ models are very similar to the primitives we've been working with. So our new model file will conform to the renderable protocol. We'll provide a vertex descriptor and shader functions for the pipeline state. I need to define all the properties to make my model renderable, so I'll copy these from primitive. I'm going to use the default vertex and fragment functions for the moment. I should be able to render the mushroom model even if it doesn't have the color information. The only thing I need to change here is the vertex descriptor. As these are all floats, I can make the offset calculations a little easier. So here I'm just taking the float by the number of floats used. Later on we'll be lighting these models and so we'll bring in the normals as well as the position, colour and texture. The normals are a three float vector and we'll be discussing what exactly normals are later on. We won't need to use the vertex struct for this as the attributes are all using floats. So I'll just calculate the stride from the number of floats used. The last thing to conform to renderable is the do render method and the project now compiles. Obviously the model won't render yet though. Let's create the function for loading the model with the file name as a parameter. Firstly we'll get the asset URL from the name provided. Model.io requires a special Model.io vertex descriptor but instead of creating one from scratch we can use the metal vertex descriptor that we've already created. Here we've created a model IO vertex descriptor from the metal vertex descriptor. This descriptor is only partially complete. Model IO needs some further details. We have to tell the descriptor exactly what each attribute is, position, color, texture, and normal. Here's the position attribute and the color attribute and the texture coordinates attribute and the normal attribute. There are a number of these predefined names that Model.io can use. Apart from these common ones, you can generate ambient occlusion values or even compute the normals instead of loading them. To load the asset, we need to create a mesh buffer allocator. This handles all the loading and management on the GPU of the vertex and index data. And finally, we can load the asset using the asset's URL, the vertex descriptor, and the buffer allocator. So now we have the asset loaded in memory, but we still need access to the file data, the vertex and index data. In Model.io, these are called meshes. Each mesh has a vertex buffer containing the vertices. Each mesh also has at least one submesh with an index buffer. I'll create a property for these meshes and load up the meshes array in the load method. And that's all we need to do to load up an OBJ file into the meshes array. Now we'll create the initializer to load the model and then build the pipeline state. And now for rendering the model. In do render, I'll add the model constants and the pipeline state, just as we did for the primitive. And check that the meshes array isn't empty. And loop through the meshes array, setting the vertex buffer. Finally, we'll loop through the submesh array for each mesh to actually draw the mesh. And that's all done. It does seem like a lot of setup, but it's standard code, and once it's done, you can use it everywhere. Now for the exciting part. Let's add a model to the scene. I'll load the models from the resources folder for this video. I'm going to use this mushroom with this texture. In game scene, 
I'll add the mushroom. And add it to the scene. And set a rotation animation on it. And build and run. And there's a black mushroom loaded from the OBJ file. The origin of the mushroom is at the bottom of the stalk, so that point is at 0, 0. Now let's texture the model. I'll do this very simply. If there's a PNG texture of the same name, I'll use that with the textured fragment function. Otherwise, I'll just use the default fragment function as I am now. I'll conform model to texturable and that'll give us access to the set texture method in texturable. And I'll need to add the protocols texture property. In init, I'll use the name of the model to load the texture. I have to do this before loading the pipeline state so that the correct fragment function will be used in the pipeline. If the texture is found, we'll use the textured fragment function instead of the default fragment function. And of course, tell the command encoder to load up the texture into the fragment buffer. Build and run. And there's the textured mushroom in all its glory. You can see what a difference lighting and shading will make. The mushroom looks completely flat, even though we know it's actually a 3D model. That's it for this video tutorial, and now I have a really fun challenge for you to create this model in Blender and add it to your scene. It's just a sphere, but if you're interested in making 3D models, there's a link in the challenge to a tutorial to create Vicky's mushroom that we used earlier. All instructions are in the challenge document accompanying this video. That's it for this video tutorial. In the next video, we're going to look at how you can render a crowd scene with many models in it using a model with thousands of vertices. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.